I was finally persuaded to watch Flux and I am so disappointed with this first episode. I feel like Doctor Who has been watching too many Marvel films and is making things far too complicated, far more complicated than it needs to be. Let us remember that Doctor Who is a family show and should be understood by people of all ages. There is no way that a young child, or at least a slightly older child, is going to be able to follow how complicated this first episode is. Now, perhaps things that are mentioned in Flux in this first episode in the Halloween Apocalypse will be explained or make more sense or become clearer as this six-part series progresses. But I have to say, this doesn't feel like a Doctor Who episode. If you compare this to a Christopher Eccleston episode or David Tennant, Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, you know, I I was so happy when Chris Chibnall was taking over. I thought he was going to be fantastic. I love a lot of the shows that he's worked on. But he has made Doctor Who more complex and leaving us with so many questions, usually surrounding who the Doctor is and where the Doctor's been or perhaps where the Doctor is going that it just sucks the fun out of the episode as a thing on its own. Now, I have to point out, I was a diehard Doctor Who fan from 2005 until Jodie Whittaker's second series, maybe. Maybe her first series. And then I just found that they started to change the feel of the show, change the way in which the show would address episodes, so as, as I said there, instead of just allowing us to enjoy an episode in itself, there are always so many questions making us kind of, making us kind of philosophize. And I think Peter Capaldi's Doctor did this quite a bit, but not in a way that ruined the enjoyment of the episode. The episodes with Capaldi, and even some of Whitaker's earlier episodes, still had elements of fun. And that's the main thing about Doctor Who. Doctor Who is meant to be fun, while giving us, you know, character progression and maybe some grittier episodes here and there but for the moment i feel like doctor who has lost any kind of fun or excitement obviously john bishop has been brought into this for some comic appeal and absolutely yes i think he is amazing and i will talk about that in a moment and some of the other things that i thought were pretty good here but um yeah, I just feel like the show has become so complicated that you can't enjoy an episode on its own. And that is why I am unfortunately not going to continue with Flux. So this first episode starts off quite dramatically and I, I thought, okay, this is, this is a pretty fun way to start it. I'm not going to go into too much detail, by the way. I don't want to spoil it in case you do want to watch it. But it started off quite dramatically with the Doctor and Yaz hanging upside down. I still don't like Yaz, I still think Yaz is an exceptionally pointless character, and I've always felt that about Yaz. But brushing that aside, the Doctor yelling at a pair of handcuffs, going a bit Scottish, yeah, this is this is fun, this could be interesting, I don't know where this is heading. But then all of a sudden, so many names start getting thrown around, and terminology, and names of creatures, and planets, and all of these different things that have never been mentioned before. Unless perhaps they were mentioned in the previous series, at which point I started to lose a lot of interest because it started to become so complicated. And I kind of thought, all right, well, this is just a little bit over the top and it's a little bit too much. I'm aware that this is a six part series. So maybe this first episode is meant to be complicated and we're going to get answers as we go on. But I just found this so boring. I had no emotional investment in it. I didn't care who the dog creature was. Um, I have to say the costume for that, like, it kind of looks like a cross between Chewbacca the Wookiee and Hacker from CBBC. That is the vibe that I'm getting with this character, with Carvanista, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, the, the costume's there, the costume looks kind of cheap, but in a kind of effective way. That kind of makes that look a little bit funny. And when there's interaction there with John Bishop's character, yep, I think that's all right. But I have to say, this is just so messy. It's back and forth. The editing is really bad. You know, just as we're getting into a moment with John Bishop's character um, and Carvanista, it cuts to the Doctor and Yaz. And just as something interesting begins to happen with the Doctor and Yaz, for example, the appearance of the door, 
it cuts back to somebody else or to Claire. And I just feel like there's no time for us to get to grips with one aspect of this before we're thrown into something else. And as I said, again, maybe that's the intention. Maybe we're meant to be so confused that in theory, we'd be desperate to watch the next episode to find out the answers to all of these many, many questions. But I was just so confused, so, fr so frustrated by the poor editing and so frustrated by how little time we had to absorb any aspect of it that I don't want to give the next episode a chance. And I'm heartbroken because I, I didn't, when this first came out um, at the end of last year, I didn't want to watch it. I thought I've done, I'm done. I've washed my hands of Doctor Who, the previous series and the New Year's Day special and everything. Christmas, New Year special, whatever that special was for. I just thought this is, this is not good. This is not the Doctor Who I fell in love with. Does the fact that it's changed make it bad? Well, I've pinpointed specific reasons for why this episode is not good, and why it's not well written, and why it's not well edited, in my opinion. Some people may love it. So yes, the changes for me are actually bad. It's not just that it's had a change of pace, or a change of tone, and then it's not appealing to me. I actually think the show is genuinely going in a direction that's really bad. The editing isn't very good. It is overly complicated. It has been taking direction from Marvel. Marvel is written for fans of Marvel. You need to understand all of the Easter eggs. These are not Easter eggs with Doctor Who, but they are making it overly complicated. And I just don't think it works very well. Sure, by the end of the sixth episode, I might understand all of it, but I didn't enjoy anything in the Halloween apocalypse. John Bishop, yes, I did. And um, visuals, you know, the visual quality, the CGI, the camera work, it's stunning. And it's like they're putting all of their money into this visual beauty and not really putting any effort into actually writing a quality story. When you have three or four different classic Doctor Who creatures in one series or one like kind of extended episode, you're kind of saying, okay, we haven't got a good narrative, so we'll just give you some creatures that we know you'll like instead. It's a gimmick. And I'll be honest, I like the, I like the selection. I won't say who, but I like the selection of the individuals that we encountered in this first episode. One of which I think is overdone. One of which I think is definitely overrated. But at the same time, I feel like it it kind of worked with having little bits of them rather than making the episode all about this one creature or this other creature. But at the same time, I do feel like it's a gimmick. I do feel like they've got such a poorly executed narrative that they need to incorporate all of these different creatures to at least have some level of engagement. And I think that is the important thing here. It's a very poorly executed, poorly written narrative. As a whole, the concept of flux um, sounds interesting. And I have read a tiny bit about this. I don't know what happens in the future episodes. I don't really know how it develops, but I'm kind of aware of the general concept outside of this episode. And I think it's a really interesting concept that in itself is kind of complicated, but good writing would make it easy enough to understand. It would make it accessible for anybody, or at least any Doctor Who fan. People who watch previous episodes in a younger age are not necessarily going to understand things like this because it's so complex and in a way that's just frustrating, not enjoyable. I'm not curious. I don't want to unravel the mystery. I honestly, I really loved Chivno's work with Broadchurch and I, he has ruined Doctor Who for me. And I hate to admit that because I was very, very excited when Chivno took over Moffat. I was glad to see the back of Moffat because I thought he was ruining the show. And then Chivno came along and it was interesting for a bit because Whitaker was fresh and exciting. And then everything's just gone downhill very, very quickly. Every episode leaves us with more and more questions and none of which are being answered. Obviously, I ha I'm not going to continue watching The Flux. But, big but, Russell T Davis is coming back and I'm very excited about that because I feel like we're going to get back into the vibe of the good Doctor Who, the quality episodes that we got basically before he left. Not that there are no good episodes with um, Capaldi or Matt Smith, but 
at the same time, Russell T. Davies is, is is the king of Doctor Who, and I'm I'm very excited. If anybody can turn it back around, and make the show regain its triumph, Russell T. Davies can do that. Also, the rumor that Hugh Grant might be the next Doctor. Yes, please. I'm all be- I'm all behind that. I'm all for that. Apparently, he regretted turning down the role previously, so maybe there's some truth in that rumor. I would very much like to see that. I'm heartbroken that I am now in a place where I can say that that, what, 15, 16 year love that I had of Doctor Who, which I know compared to some people is, is not massive, but let, bearing in mind I'm only, I'm only um, 30, so that must be about 17, about a 17 year love of Doctor Who has basically been ruined by the last, the previous season, the previous series and the flux. It's heartbreaking to think that it's kind of dampened my love of the show. I won't be continuing with the flux. I will probably read up on it to kind of see what happens. If anything piques my interest and something happens that I really want to see, then maybe I'll watch that episode or that clip. But I haven't given up on the show completely. I've enjoyed Whitaker so far. I think she's fantastic as the Doctor, but has absolutely terrible, terrible writing. The writing in her episodes are appalling, really bad, and it breaks my heart. But I will be returning to Doctor Who um, as a fan with hope in my heart when Russell T Davies returns. There is still hope yet, 